when you buy a cheap tool like I did and spent $12 on this utility grade hatchet this is what you're gonna get for your money and this is how it's gonna hold up under use I bought it 10 maybe 15 years ago but during this time I really only used it for maybe three hours after which the handle broke but the remaining part of the handle really stayed inside the head head and and after that I used it for another maybe three four hours and then it broke in half just like this with the handle broken into it I used it as a splitting wedge and I just beat it with a sledgehammer you can see my hammer prints on the tail end of this X head and uh, and under the uh, hammer blows you can see the head here being mushroomed out as metal is displaced and uh, really this hatchet head uh, shouldn't be ductile like this shouldn't be forming a mushroom head it should be hardened but the problem is that this hatchet was made the wrong way and uh, I'm gonna show you how, how it was made or what I see here so this yellow stuff that you see inside that's the glue that held the broken bit of the handle you know the handle was held in place the broken part really well no problems there but as I was using the tool let me see how was it yeah this is how it was as I was using the tool as a splitting wedge to split logs with uh, the hammer blows coming in this, this direction uh, the force was not transmitted really through the handle evenly it was shared by the metal and by the broken wooden handle so the, um, the uh, portion of the force that were that was transformed transformed into the metal came around and then moved ahead towards the cutting edge but blow by blow it started mushrooming out not only at the head but here at the thin parts of the metal as well now thin is not the issue because other hatchets are also made to the same proportions here and here in relation to the head size or the blade construction and everything but it was too ductile it was started going here and giving way and you can see it didn't fail all at once this was the last part where it broke it it it, it started cracking here and kept um, and uh, kept being this this metal continued to be displaced there and then it broke after you know with, with one final blow you can see another huge crack line there so what I see in this one and, and also you can see it on on its edge that it's got huge uh, chips missing from it but you can see that it's too ductile it's the metal is smeared over to the side okay also here look at that that's that's bent backwards okay it's too ductile why it's too ductile or how we ended up with this product is that this head was cast not forged and the casting can be seen here on this granular surface here that it was sand cast those are the that's the negative side of the sand mold the what you see is the grain sand grain sizes of the mold that uh, made this cavity here originally so casting is not the way to make a hatchet or a or an axe head these need to be forged in a forging die under a forging hammer head okay and the forging hammers blows will keep all the air inclusions microscopic air bubbles slag or any kind of impurities it will beat it out from the product okay that's how hammers are that's how okay that's also how hammers are made but that's also how hatchets and axe heads should be made not by casting so you can see that the in the cross section of this there you can see 
microscopic small air bubbles throughout everywhere in the cross section okay and uh, everywhere throughout and because the the surface here is jagged and grainy that also tells me that when this was cast it was let to cool down at uh, ambient air temperature for a long period of time uh, slowly cooling is not the way to make a solid strong axe head or hatchet head these need to be after forging these need to be quenched and tempered because if they aren't they're gonna be they're gonna be ductile and they're gonna end up like this sorry that what quenching is is uh, elevating the temperature of this X because because this is forged hot while it's red hot not liquid hot you know just spongy so it's formable it's it's forged red hot and uh, and after that it should it should be at a temperature from which it is rapidly cooled either in hot water sorry either in water or oil or air it could be cooled by air as well but its temperatures and cooling times are very important as well as the metals composition okay it cannot just be steel it has to be high carbon steel at least for quenching to be successful you cannot quench mild steel and this probably is just mild steel or whatever so that's what you get when you buy cheap tools and uh, that's how they're gonna end up with